Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to upgrade an Amazon EKS cluster with zero downtime. Here is exactly what we will cover. First, we will create EKS cluster with version 1.28. Next, we will deploy a Python application to demonstrate that the cluster remains fully operational throughout the entire upgrade process. Then we will perform a live upgrade of the cluster from version 1.28 to 1.29. Finally, we will verify that the upgrade completed successfully and that our app kept running without interruptions. Let's get started. Let's create EKS cluster using EKS CTL command. We are using version 1.28. We are creating one node group with two nodes. Enter. Cluster creation takes time. After cluster is created, I will come back. Let's check the cluster status. Yeah, the cluster has been created successfully. To demonstrate cluster remains highly available during upgrade process, Let's deploy a Python application. I will share this repository details in a comment. You can copy from there or even I will put it in a description box. Here this is Python application which is uh, created by me. This application is kept in my Docker Hub account. When this is deployed, it creates five replicas. I created service file with type load balancer so that it creates a load balancer inside Amazon Web Services. Using that we can check if application is live during upgrade process. I already have this repository in my local. So these are the files. Let's use kubectl apply hyphen f dot slash. It picks all files in current folder. There are two files. Enter. Deployment and service both are created. Let's get pods. There are five replicas. Let's wait for few minutes because ALB creation takes time. Let's see ALB status inside Amazon console. Go to EC2 dashboard. Click on load balancers. Yeah, there is a load balancer created. Select that. Go to target instances. So it is out of service, meaning the health check process is going on in the background. Let's wait for the health check process to finish. The instances joined load balancer successfully. It is in service. Let's take load balancer endpoint. Take DNS name. Put it in the browser. And I see a response coming from Python application which is running inside Kubernetes cluster. Now let's begin upgrade process. Let's use ekctl upgrade cluster command. I'm providing name, region where the cluster is created and new version that is 1.29. And remember first we should upgrade the control plane. After that uh, add-ons and finally node group that's the process let's hit enter this is also going to take few minutes i'll pause the video and i'll come back once it is ready the upgrade process is still going on let's check if application is still up and running let's refresh this page yeah the application is up and running 
the cluster has been successfully upgraded to 1.29 go to eks Let's see clusters. Yeah, it is pointing to 1.29. After control plane is upgraded, we need to upgrade add-ons. Let's use EKCTL update add-on command. We are upgrading cube proxy. There is an error in the command. In place of hyphen hyphen cluster, we used hyphen hyphen name. That's a problem. Add on upgrade process is going on. Let's see if application is still available. Refresh the page. The application is still live. Cube proxy is successfully updated to the compatible version of 1.29. Let's update code DNS add-on. The applications running on Kubernetes cluster is still live. Now let's update VPC CNI. Control plane and add-ons are successfully upgraded. Let's verify its status. And if you see, 1.29 is the latest version of EKS cluster. Let's run kubectl version command. It should be 1.29, this one server version. Let's also check node status. We updated EKS control plane version, new version is 1.29. Accordingly, add ons also updated. We are left with only node group. So, after updating node group from 1.28 to 1.29, we are almost done. So, we are using AWS EKS command update node group version by giving Cluster name region, node group name is ng-1 and Kubernetes version should be 1.29, enter. This process takes few minutes and again, during this process, the application will be available. So let's run kubectl get nodes command. So what happens right in the background, it will launch new EC2 instances with latest version. Let's see node group status from AWS console, click on the cluster, compute and see here, status is updating. It takes few minutes. Meanwhile, let's also check if application is still live it is still accessible. Let's run kubectl get nodes. There are four nodes. Two nodes with age 33 minutes. They are old. You see two nodes are created newly with version 1.29. And what happens, right? Eventually it will remove old nodes with version 1.28 and evic pods running on those nodes bring them on to newly created nodes this process happens without any application downtime let's run this command again there is new information on all nodes there is a status scheduling disabled which means even if I deploy an application now, it gets deployed, but it won't get onto these two old nodes. It will get onto newly created nodes. After the upgrade process is successfully finished, it will remove old two nodes. Let's also check what is happening to the pods.
out of 5, 3 pods are still 31 minutes age, meaning the old ones. 2 pods with 2 minute age, meaning these pods are recreated on new nodes. Let's run again. Still the process is going on. It takes few more minutes to check if we are able to deploy new applications onto Kubernetes cluster. Let's run Nginx pod. Yeah, we are able to run Nginx pod even during the upgrade process. kubectl get pods. Nginx pod is also up and running. Looks like all pods got migrated onto new version, new nodes that is created. Let's check node details. Two nodes successfully joined EKS cluster and they are ready. The third one, which is in scheduling disabled status. After a few minutes, this node gets terminated. After that, our complete EKS cluster upgrade process is finished. To summarize the process, first upgrade control plane, then update all add-ons, update node group. Remember, during upgrade process, the API server is available as well as the applications running on the cluster is also available. If we want to deploy new applications during upgrade process, it is also allowed. Thank you so much.